NBA draft now less than a month away. All those Big Ten names that put their names into the draft to get some feedback. Some hired an agent. Those players will be staying in the draft. The list that you see on the right, those are the players returning to school. It's the should I stay or should I go decision. It will affect not just the NBA, but the Big Ten as well. And for more on those decisions that came right down to the deadline, we go to our good friend Mike DeCourcy of the Sporting News, a man who knows a thing or two about writing to a deadline. Uh, Mike, Caleb Swanigan decided until the very last minute before he made the call that he was going to the NBA. We expected it to come so much quicker. Do you think there was actually a decision here? I think there was in the sense of uh, he's not been able to gather, from from my understanding, a real... No, a real solid feel for how he's viewed. I think everybody likes him as a player, but uh, as a draft prospect, that's a different deal. And so can you get yourself a guarantee that at 20 or 25 or 28 or wherever that they're going to take you? And I think he was looking for that. Ultimately, I think he realized he's going to be a successful NBA player no matter where he's picked. And it was time, uh, he, he had certainly accomplished plenty in college, and it was time to go ahead and take a shot at that. I, I, I strongly believe this. There are not 30 better draft prospects, NBA prospects, available to NBA teams in June. There are not. And, and, and there may not be 20, but there certainly aren't 30. Mike, if I take Caleb Swanigan off the board, which Big Ten player who decided to stay in the draft, depart from their former school, will leave the biggest impact in the hole that they leave at that school? I'm going to say D.J. Wilson, uh, because we had just gotten the, the first real look at what he might have been next year for the Wolverines in his run through the Big Ten and NCAA tournaments. Uh, he, he scored in double figures in six out of seven games in, the, in those two events. And, and that's not who he'd been all year. I mean, he gave you 20, and the next game he might give you two. And that had been his personality as a player all the way through the regular season. And then all of a sudden he started to get it. And that could have been an All-America level performance for, what, for, for, for uh, the Wolverines next year. And so losing him does leave a really big gap that's going to be a challenge for the Wolverines to fill. So let's go to the other side of the coin and talk about those guys who decided to return. And now we're just talking about deadline decisions here. So Miles Bridges not involved. Of those guys who decided late to return, who will have the biggest positive impact on their team? I'm going to go with Vince Edwards. I've, I've liked his ability since I saw him practice uh, with, the, with the Boilermakers uh, and got a chance to really look at him prior to his sophomore year. And I said to the guys, I, you got four pros on your team, and now two of them are already in the league, and, and then two are left, and Isaac Koss and Vince are, are going to be part of next year's team. And I think Vince, because of Caleb Swanigan leaving, he leaves a lot of points and rebounds out there and a lot of responsibility. And I think Vince Edwards is capable and ready to assume a lot of that responsibility. Another guy who many people believe will have an NBA career, Dakota Mathias, also back, though not a guy that tested the NBA waters. Lastly, Mike, let's touch on Indiana. Archie Miller takes over, but he's taking over a team that now no longer has OG Ananobi, James Blackman Jr., or Thomas Bryant. So what does that mean for Archie Miller in year one? I think it certainly means he's got less talent, and that's, that, that's never a good thing. But I, I do think it also gives him a chance to have a fresh start. And those guys were all veteran players who'd spent a lot of time under Tom Crean. And other than Colin Hartman, uh, most of the guys that are back uh, had spent a little time with Tom and certainly gotten a chance to understand what it is to play in Division One and what it is to play in the Big Ten. But they'll be more easily taken over to a new system and new responsibilities uh, that, that Archie Miller will present to them. So I, I think you look at Davis and players like that uh, being able to really have a, you know, a, a new idea and a new look at how to play and what's expected of them without having ingrained habits from two to three years of being a Division I player. Mike DeCourcy, always a glass half full kind of guy. Mike, as always, appreciate the time. Thank you, Rick.